What is up amigos? Today we're talking about a doublet and this is quite a crucial point in potential flow and two-dimensional flow. So in the past weeks we're going through things like the string function and sinks and sources. If you haven't checked out those videos, check out those videos here. And for a doublet, we first start off with, let's say we have the flow in this region here. And we have at one point in the flow, a source. So the flow comes out of this point and it has a strength of lambda. Next to it, not to next to it, but some point in the flow around here, we have the sink and that is where the flow is going into. And this has a strength of negative lambda. So it's the exact same strength, but just in the opposite sign. And at some point in the flow, it doesn't really matter where, we're just gonna call this A. It could be anywhere around here, but let's just say it's here. We have this point and we want to know what the flow is doing here compared to anywhere else. So the flow is coming out of here. It's gonna be circling around somehow. How does it go through this point? What's the flow doing here? So first of all, the distance between the source and point A is denoted by the letter R. The distance between the sink and the source is denoted by the letter L. And the angle here is theta one, angle here is theta two, and hence the difference between the line connecting the point in the flow and the source and the point in the flow and the sink is delta theta. And I've just put the Cartesian coordinate system here, which we'll look at later. Um, we don't need to look at it now, we're gonna be going through radial first and then Cartesian afterwards. But anyway, so this is the regular setup. So straight up, we can actually say that the string function psi equals lambda theta one divided by two pi minus lambda theta two divided by two pi. So this is actually already very powerful because we can just literally use this differentiate it to find out the velocity and in the two different directions quite easily just here. And this also then means that it simplifies to minus lambda on two pi delta theta because delta theta is theta two minus theta one. So we just have the negative here to cancel out that to get back to theta one minus theta two. So that's what simplifies two. But in terms of these two points, when they come closer together, we can actually simplify this equation even more and get it to be a quite neat equation. So first of all, we're gonna have to go through some maths first, first but we'll get to the end and it'll be um, a lot more crisper and then we can go to the Cartesian coordinates afterwards from there as well. So first of all, this is just a general equation, but as the length L gets smaller, we effectively can approximate this situation by a right angle triangle. And so as L tends towards zero, delta theta equals L sine theta divided by R L cos theta. That's an L there. And that means that psi equals minus lambda on two pi L sine theta divided by r minus l cos theta. And we'll put in a new constant here, which we'll say k, and this equals lambda l. So we can get rid of that top l in the numerator there. So as l uh, tends to zero, we can then say psi equals minus k on two pi sine theta divided by r. So that is what psi is for the radial coordinates. And we can differentiate that again to get the different streamlines and or the UMV velocities. And we can also get the velocity potential. Phi is K divided by two pi cos theta divided by R. So before we go any further, let's talk about what happens here. Why is this useful? So let's say we have this doublet here where we have the source and sink very close to each other. And we look at the streamlines. We actually see that the streamlines are circular. So the flow is coming out of the source and it's coming out here, for example, and then the sink is pulling it back and it's sucking it straight into here. And the same thing happens here where it's coming along here and also underneath, it's symmetrical underneath as well. And to find out these streamlines, you then just set Psi to a certain amount. So Psi equals C1 here, that's for this streamline. So you can say it's five or whatever, and then differentiate this to find out where what's happening. You can have Psi equals C2 here, that's for this line, and so on and so forth. So you can actually find how the streamlines are moving in this field. So that is for radial. Let's go to the Cartesian now. X squared plus Y squared equals R squared. And that's important because we know that R is featuring in these um, functions here. So we know also, that sine theta equals y divided by r and cos theta equals x divided by r. Therefore, psi, just subbing this in, equals minus k, this part here goes into here, minus k on two pi, y on r, 
divided by r, which equals minus k on 2 pi y divided by r squared, and we know that r squared equals x squared plus y squared. Therefore, we say that this equals minus k on 2 pi y on x squared plus y squared. And if we were to look at the phi function, the, the velocity potential, we can do a very similar thing. So just k equals uh, phi equals uh, k on 2 pi, x on r on r, because r here and cos theta, cos theta equals uh, x on r. So that equals k on 2 pi, x on r squared, and then that goes to k on 2 pi, x on x squared plus y squared. So now we have in the Cartesian coordinates, the velocity potential and the stream function for this doublet. So that is what a doublet is, and this is very powerful when you have a flow, for example, entering one point and then exiting another point very close to it. You might have suction and, or like pressure coming through. So that's where we would use it, and we can build upon this in the next videos that we're going over in a few weeks to put this into a regular flow. So that's in this video. If you'd like to make sure to click the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you soon. Peace, amigos.